In this episode, we'll be heading into the Thai countryside to a province called Amnacharon, where we'll take part in one of Thailand's dirtiest festivals. A part of Thailand rarely visited, the province constitutes mostly farmland, and the majority of its residents work in agriculture. You might think there's not much going on here. Amnacharon belongs to a larger region known as Isan, which covers the northeast of Thailand. Historically, the central region of Thailand was known as Siam, and the area known today as Isan was in part actually within the Laos border. The Isan people are ethnically Lao, and they even have their own dialect, which differs substantially from the Thai language. As such, many of their traditions differ too, and today, I'll be sharing one of these traditions with you. This is Rocket Festival. I'll be heading into Amnacharon town and staying here at the Fikert Hotel. £14 a night and a short trip away from the Namomar village where the festival takes place. So here we are at the village. Life is simpler here. Cows graze in the field out back. Chickens roam freely. And children play in the rice fields. In a normally peaceful corner of the Thai countryside, around the end of May, the Rocket Festival, or Bunbang Phai, stirs up a lot of excitement and attracts plenty of folks from the neighboring villages. It's a two day festival celebrated amongst the Isan people and the ethnic Lao, marking the start of the rainy season. Day one starts slowly with traditional dancing and symbolic processions. But day two is when the real fun begins. The crowds patiently sit, sweltering in the heat as they wait for the ceremony to begin. I sat down with one of the villagers to find out more about the story of the festival. There is another story about the Isan. It's 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 about the Isan. The Isan is about the Isan. It's 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 about the Isan. กับทุกคนในแบบว่าในประชาชนเอียงสีนากระหักเล่าหลายยังสีเราเราเหตุดีปะนี่ที่นี่หักไปหักมากปะนี่ก็คือแต่ว่าชาวบ้านนี่กับแบบกับมีเทพมียังนับถืออยู่กับคือพญาแถนปะนี่แล้วเอ่อกับคือกระซาดองค์เนี่ยดีดีแห้งจนแบบประชาชนนี่ลืมลืมองค์เทพปะนี่พญาแถนนี่กับกับโกรธหลายเครียดหลายว่าเออเป็นอย่างคือแบบบ่มีคนแบบบ่มีคนมาเข้าโลบูชาเลยยังสี่ก็เลยเขียดบ่ให้ฝนตกบ่ให้ฝนตกที่นี่ที่นี่ก็เลยแบบเพราะพอฝนบ่ตกแล้วบ้านนี้ชาวบ้านกระเดือดร้อนบ้านนี้พญาคันคาหูแล้วบ้านนี้กระโกรธขึ้นกันก็เลยพากันยกทัพขึ้นไปสู่กันสู่กันแล้วฝนปรากฏว่าฝนปรากฏว่าพญาคันคาเนี่ยสนะพญาแถนแพ้แต่ว่าพญาแถนกะก็เลยยอมรับความพ่ายแพ้มันบ่กะประมาณว่าแต่ว่าขออย่างหนึ่งในบ่อขอให้แบบว่าอย่าลืมอย่าลืมเล่าอีกเด้อเออบานนี้ชาวบ้านก็เลยว่าเออสัสนิกสิจุดบังไฟขึ้นไปถาวายทุกปียังสินะบานนี้ที่นี่คนคนอีสานอ่ะก็จะเสื้อว่าเออนี่การจุดบังไฟขึ้นไปบูชาพญาแถนในการจะเหตุให้ฝนตกต้องตามตามฤดูกาลมีฝนเหตุใดเหตุหน้าเหตุอย่างเพราะว่าชาวอีสานนี่เขาเขาทําหน้ากันเป็นหลักเป็นมอที่นี่ก็เลยต้องขอฝนทุกปีนั่นแหละเป็นเป็นเป็นต้นกำเนิดพีมากของประเภทนี้บุญของไฟ The beer starts to flow and friends reunite. Soon, everyone was up and dancing, and as if by magic, the heavens opened. Now, Bai also mentioned to me that nowadays. The larger rockets are launched far away from the festival for the safety of the villagers, and I didn't get a chance to capture that moment. The dancing continued into the afternoon, 
but the day came to an early end. As we all needed to go home and get the rest we needed for the chaos of day two. The village asked for rain, and rain it did. I was thankful to be inside, and it looked like I wasn't the only one. Back in my room, and time for a nice hot shower. But whether from exhaustion or stupidity, I had some difficulty. So this is the bathroom. And here's a shower. The, uh, the flow. The flow isn't that good. Let's turn it on. There we go. <laughs> Which actually reminds me of my shower at my dad's house. And he still maintains that it's a good flow. There's nothing wrong with it. I actually take everything back. I've managed to have a nice hot shower. Somehow, <laughs> I missed this, which made a big difference. So if I turn it on now, there we go, much better. I didn't and figure this out until <laughs> the end of day two. Also missed this. I slept well, and I needed it, as day two was off to a heavy start. Lovely. This was only 11 a.m. You get two options here, beer or Thai whiskey. Choose the beer. I'm pretty sure the Thai whiskey is poisonous. Whilst we were all getting drunk at the house, some of the villagers were hard at work preparing for day two. A generous villager had paid for the stage a concert, and dances for the whole day. You want some beer? Yeah. Why you not buy? Good question. The stage was coming along quickly. Back at the house, the fun continued. <laughs> the stage was almost ready, but Bai had a few more rockets to let off. Be careful where you throw those rockets by. Obviously that didn't happen. Meanwhile, in a nearby field, kids were letting off their own rock. Around the back of the field, right next to the festival, were the monks' quarters. And whether they wanted to or not, they'd be part of the festival. There'd be no rest for the dead this day. With the stage all set, it was time to test the speakers, and for a few formalities. And now that's all wrapped up, it's time for the festival to begin. There was a tension in the air. People were just standing around. No one wanted to kick off the chaos. The villagers had divided themselves into teams, each wearing a t-shirt of the team's color. I started off in the white team, but by the end of the festival, the team colors were unrecognizable. We were all part of the brown team. The kids were the first to get messy. A nice surprise for someone. Victim number one. Let's see what happens next. That 
that worked out well. At least he's got a scarf. No chance of revenge either. More and more people took to the mud, and everywhere I looked, someone was getting decked. Clean t-shirts made prime targets, and if you were seen wearing one, it was either going to get covered in mud or ripped off. Sitting on the sidelines wouldn't keep you safe either. You could bet that sooner or later, four or five people would take you limb by limb and dump you face first in the mud. The kids had their own entertainment away from the muddy battlefield. The craziness continued and even the girls weren't safe. You're gonna have to trust me when I say, this was just the beginning. Sadly, I wasn't able to capture the real chaos. I didn't have a cameraman. And as lovely as the villagers were, everyone wanted to get me plastered in mud and I couldn't risk damage to my camera. I do have a couple of photos though. Towards the end, the fireman's hose came out and the scene was like an African villager's first water well at the end of a seven year drought. It was pretty comical. And when it was over, I went for a swim with some of the villagers in one of the rice fields, where I saw a snake enter the rice field and promptly exited. The festival wrapped itself up from exhaustion, and the villagers helped clear up the aftermath. The toilets had seen better days. I'd like to thank all of the villagers that I met there. Each person was truly unique and a character. They welcomed me, a stranger and a foreigner, into their village like a friend. These folks really were the salt of the earth. With the stage dismantled, people headed home to fill their bellies and collapse into bed. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. Now, I know you hear it all the time, but if you do like my videos, then please consider subscribing. It's only with your guys' support that I'm able to do this. That being said, if you haven't checked out my other videos, then just head over to my channel. In the next episode, I'll be heading to the world's biggest outdoor market, and I hope to see you guys there.